Hello and thank you for joining me. Here's a video of me testing and repairing two Series X controllers. Um, both of them just ended up having stick drift. One was a pretty simple repair, we went ahead and cleaned it, and the other we did end up having to solder in a new potentiometer. So go ahead, have a watch, and we'll see how it goes. I do go ahead and perform an update. It doesn't usually do much of anything, but it is good to have the controllers up to date just to rule out that as an issue. And now we'll go ahead and open, this is just Microsoft's game controller tester. Um, I go ahead, go into the settings, turn on vibration, which is the lower vibration motors, and the other vibration is for the triggers. And then set the dead zone down to zero, because we want to know how much drift it actually has. If you set it to the normal dead zone, it's not always going to show the drift that it has. As you can see here, the right stick is drifting upward, so the Y potentiometer has an issue. So right now it's staying in the center, so it looks to be an intermittent issue, but if you wait a few seconds longer, you'll see that it starts drifting up slowly back and forth. And there it goes. I'm not touching the button, and it is aiming forward. So here's just the tear down, pretty simple process. Rip off both of the side grips, take out some screws and you're inside. The Series X controllers can be a little bit of a struggle to get the side covers off. There are new clips, so they are a little bit stiff, but they do just pop off. You just got to keep pulling on them. So you can see there's two screws behind each grip and there's one screw behind the sticker. You can go ahead and be a savage and stab right through with your screwdriver, but it does look a lot nicer if you just peel the sticker back. It takes a few extra seconds, but then the controller doesn't look like it's been opened before. So if you're going to resell it or if you just care how your controller looks, which is a much, much better option for you. Now it's a size T9 Torx to remove these. So now we can go ahead and lift off the faceplate and get a look underneath. The two thumbsticks just pop right off, nothing holding them on, and then you can lift the center motherboard out of the case. So this is the potentiometer that we're going to be working on today. There are a couple extra cables in the Series X that need to be removed as opposed to the Xbox One controllers. The two white contr cables need to be removed as well as two T6 screws. And then we can flip out the secondary board and get a look at the potentiometer.
the white cables just pop off. Just take note of what position they're in to make sure that they do go back in the same spot when you're reassembling. And of course take out the headphone jack port. It needs to go back in facing out and contacts pointing up when you're looking at the controller this way. So to gain access to the inside of the potentiometer, I find it's easiest to just use a pair of tweezers and push in on the little clip and then just pry the potentiometer away from the analog stick itself. And then you can see the inner working part and just remove that part. And that's what we're going to clean. So it may not look like there's any dirt or dust in there. But once you put a cotton swab with some alcohol through, you'll see that it does actually remove quite a bit of debris out of it. And you can use a can of compressed air that you can get at the store. This is just an alternative to that. You just squeeze it and it blows the air directly out just to save from buying the cans over and over again. Um, that's just some 90% isopropyl alcohol. And then we'll clean the metal contacts as well. You just go around them and be sure to not leave any residue from the cotton swab as that can interfere as well. Just go ahead and pop it back in. It does need to go back in the same way that it came out. Uh, you'll see it is different top and bottom when you take it out, so just put it back in the same way with the contacts facing towards the black and the black back part of it facing towards the analog stick. And then once you can see it's two feet sticking through the outside and it's lined up vertically, you can go ahead and pop the potentiometer cover back on. just one clip on each side you'll hear them snap into place so pop and then you'll be in and done. And if it is incorrectly you'll see that everything moves together when you move the stick back and forth. And then we'll go ahead and reassemble enough to test. is a good idea you don't have to do this part but I always like to if you have either regular electronic cleaner that you can get at a parts store or BW100 is just a specialty cleaner that evaporates very quickly you can go ahead and just spray in the analog sticks and the potentiometers themselves it just kind of gets any excess junk out of there make sure that you're not going to have these issues in the future And to test, we don't need the headphone jack and we don't need the two white wires just to go ahead and make sure the issue is fixed before we go ahead with a full reassembly. So this is as much as it needs to be together just to see where the sticks center on the screen and then we'll go back into the testing program to be sure that it is fixed. So there it is, the Y axis is now centering at zero and not drifting up over time. I did go ahead and test more off camera just to be sure that it wasn't going to have any issues, but usually if you can see that it's sitting right at zero, there's no problems. So we'll go ahead and give it a good clean up and then reassemble. Always a good idea to clean your controllers. This one is going to be resold, but even if it's your own, they do get gross inside because your hands, if they're dirty, all that dirt and grease just goes in there. So cotton swab, alcohol in a few minutes really makes a difference to make the controllers look and feel a lot better.
I did go ahead and speed this part up. Obviously I don't have lightning hands, but I figured this would be a bit boring to watch at slow speed, so we'll just go ahead and speed it along and enjoy the ride. And you can see once it's reassembled, if you just push the sticker back down, the old adhesive is typically enough to hold it back in place so you don't have any issues there and it looks just like it had never been opened. Alright, now that the blue one's all set, we'll go ahead and get on to the Red Series X controller, which did end up having about the same issue. Um, you will see that the right side does start drifting on the Y axis. So it's a good time to go ahead and test all the buttons. You can see now the Y axis is drifting up. I'm not pushing on the thumbstick at this time. It's doing that by itself. I didn't show the teardown of this one because it's the same thing. Nobody wants to watch that twice. But if you look close here, you can see there is actually what looks to be a pet hair on the potentiometer itself, so I do go ahead here and try to clean it the same as the last one. So here's after the cleaning, it does look like it works fine. Um, it is better, it's not drifting upwards, but there is still an issue as we'll see coming up. So after reassembling and putting the cover back on, the thumbstick was not able to move past 80%. So it was never going to be fully functional, so we did need to go ahead and replace the potentiometer. My guess is that the hair and dirt or whatever was in there just damaged it too much, so cleaning it wasn't going to help. Um, that's the new potentiometer. Go ahead and add some flux on, and then just flood it with new solder. Adding extra solder just helps keep it liquid long enough that you can pull out the potentiometer. And I just grab tweezers and work it back and forth. You get one side hot and then work back and then it'll pop out. And then I use a solder sucker to get the solder out. Uh, works pretty well most of the time. These newer controllers, the solder pads are a little bit bigger, so it does typically work pretty well. Um, I do end up struggling with one for quite a while. Um, the solder sucker decided wasn't going to take all the solder out. So in the end I did have to go with the old fashioned solder wick which sometimes actually works a lot better. You can see there the solder is coming through the hole so there's just too much for the solder sucker to pull up through the other side. Come in with the wick and get that hole nice and cleaned out. And just grab a cotton swab and clean off any of that excess burned flux because we want to use fresh flux when we go ahead and resolder. We just pop the potentiometer in. They're new, you can get them on eBay pretty cheap. And then we'll just put on some new solder. And once it zooms in, you'll be able to see the joints are nice and shiny, and as Northbridge Fix would say, better than factory. I actually do get my flux from Northbridge Fix. You can check them out, northridgefix.com. It's Amtech 559 Flux. Excellent person to deal with. He does his own repairs. Here's a pro tip. If you have extra screws from the inside of the controller, not the exterior case, but any of the interior components, if you have a broken controller lying around, 
you can take those T6 screws and add them in here for a little more rigidity with the controller. Uh, I find it's most useful if you're in game and you have heavy vibration going, you won't feel the inside of the controller rattling. These aren't populated, but they are threaded and ready to accept a screw. And you can see shaking around, now there's no motion at all without the cover even on. So both controllers were fixed, I did end up selling them on as that's what I do, repair and then sell. I don't need a bunch of them lying around though, I probably do have more than I should. But thank you for watching if you made it this far and we'll see you next time.